let's start off, guys. A nonpolar covalent bond. All right. Nonpolar means no poles. It deals with an even sharing of electrons. Now, if we look at the picture here, this is actually a picture between two fluorines. Each fluorine has an electronegativity value. That's what this is. So the 4.0 that you see there is an electronegativity value that I have looked up and I've simply written here. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't be asked to memorize it. And I want you to see that both elements here, both fluorines, have the same electronegativity. And a second ago, I said electronegativity is the strength of an element to pull this shared set of electrons towards itself. It's like a tug of war over these electrons. What I want you to see, though, is that because they both have the same strength, the electrons are not going to move anywhere. And when they don't move anywhere, we're not going to get any plus minuses. No, so no poles means no plus minuses associated with this nonpolar covalent bond. Now, I want you to key in on this. When I have an even sharing of electrons, as I have in a nonpolar covalent bond, the electronegativity difference is specifically going to be between these two. Now, how did I get that? I took 4.0 from the one atom, I subtract the 4.0 from the other atom, and I end up with a zero difference in electronegativity. These values come from what's known as the Pauling scale. And you can look it up if you want, the Pauling scale. So a 4 on the Pauling scale minus another 4 gives me 0, and 0 falls with, within this range, telling me that it is a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, that's a little different from this. A polar covalent bond deals with the uneven sharing of electrons. That's right. The electrons that are in between the two atoms here, in this case, is oxygen and fluorine, they're sharing these electrons right here. The electrons are going to migrate or be pulled towards the more electronegative element. Now, oxygen has a Pauling scale rating or electronegativity value of 3.5. That's pretty electronegative, but I want you to see when I subtract these two values of 4.0 minus 3.5, I end up with a 0.5 of my difference. That now falls between 0.4 and 2.0. That is the value range that I need to be a polar covalent bond. And what's going to happen is a slight pole, a slight plus minus will be created. The next slide should show this. So what ends up happening here, guys, is that oxygen will have its electrons moved away towards the fluorine, the more electronegative element. I'm kind of also trying to show you that the more electronegative elements are smaller in size. Their atomic size is smaller. And that's kind of what I'm showing you. Oxygen's a little bit bigger. When the electrons move in that direction, fluorine becomes negative, meaning oxygen then becomes positive. And what you're often going to see in chemistry textbooks and chemistry help videos is probably something like this. I try to draw an arrow down here. This arrow shows the directions the electrons are moving towards the more electronegative element. And they also throw a little plus on the back there to remind you that oxygen is getting a plus attached to it. Fluorine a negative because a negative is moving that direction so this atom right here becomes slightly negative and this atom here becomes slightly positive what have I created a polar bond because this becomes negative oxygen becomes positive and what I've created here is a pole remember a pole was one side positive and one side negative lastly ionic bonds they don't deal with the sharing or the uneven sharing, they deal with the transfer of electrons. What I'm trying to demonstrate in this picture here is that I have an element like oxygen, which has an electronegativity rating of 3.5, and calcium. Calcium is a very large element. It's bigger than oxygen, and it has a low electronegativity value. And when you subtract 3.5 minus 1, we end up with an electronegativity difference of 2.5 on the Pauling scale. That value is greater than 2, and that difference classifies it as an ionic bond. Now, what's happened here is that an ion has been created. Oxygen has acquired 2, has taken, that has transferred 2 of calcium's outer shell electrons. And therefore, oxygen now gets what's known as a 2 minus charge. And calcium loses 2 electrons, it becomes a 2 plus charge. So the difference here is that I've actually created 
legitimate ions. And ions are nothing more than very large poles. And they are created by the transfer of electrons. And I, I could actually draw an arrow and draw this side positive if I want to, but in reality, you see what's happening. The electrons have been lost and went over to oxygen. So what is the big story here? In this case, oxygen becomes totally negative. Not slightly, but totally. And calcium becomes totally positive. Once again, not slightly, as you saw in the past. And I'm going to drill this point home here again. The differences in electronegativity values are going to generate these poles. The larger the difference in electronegativity values, as you saw, generates a larger pole. The largest pole that could be created would be making an ionic bond or an ion. The smallest pole that you can create would be a nonpolar covalent bond, as we saw, such as fluorine bonded to another fluorine. Because of the same electronegativity value, this pair of electrons is going to be shared evenly, generating no poles. And a polar covalent bond, therefore, is anything in between there. From electronegativity value and difference of 0 0.4 all the way up to the difference being 2.0, this whole spectrum is a polar covalent bond, illustrating that the poles are getting larger as my difference in electronegativity is increasing. So in summary, my bonds can be classified by electronegativity. If I have a non-polar covalent bond, that's considered even sharing between the two elements. If I have a polar covalent bond, that means between the two elements it's uneven. And lastly, an ionic bond deals with not just an uneven, but a total transfer of electrons. No sharing going on here. The differences to classify nonpolar, polar, and ionic fall within these ranges, and these are ranges you'll need to have to memorize for a test or a quiz.